now the core values of the NHS. So this is the, the golden ticket for a lot of interviewers. They really love to ask questions about that. But before I show you them, does anyone want to put does anyone want to put some in the chat that they think are part of the six C's? So if you guys have a, an idea of what they are, just drop them in the chat and then we can see where everyone's at before I reveal the answers. Okay. Have a look. So we've got care, yep. Yeah. Uh, compassion. So yeah, those are definitely two of them. Respect and dignity, competent, compassion, care, competence, commitment. So yeah, so far we've got care, compassion, respect and dignity, commitment, courage, communication. I think we've actually named all of them. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's one that says respect and dignity. We actually come to that one. So that's actually not a core value in terms of the values-based recruitment of the NHS, but it's actually part of the constitution, but we'll come to that later on. But yeah, I think we've got all of them really. So I'll just reveal them now. So yeah, care, compassion, competence, communication, courage, and commitment. And yeah, that's the diagram that the NHS likes to use. So care is our business is really the motto of the NHS. Um, and yeah, so in terms of these core values, a lot of them are, you know, the values that, you know, NHS workers are held accountable for. So care, compassion, and I'll be going through each of them just to make sure that you have a, a rough idea of how to speak about these core values in interviews and how you can potentially use these values to align yourself with them and talk about your own, own experiences. So the first one, care. So this is actually, the quotes are taken from the NHS report. So care is our core business and that of our organisations and the care we deliver helps the individual person and improves the health of the whole community. Caring defines us and our work. So as you see here, it's not only just about caring for the individual person, but it's also about how your actions can help the whole community. So if you were to align yourself with care, I think it would be really, it'll be a good opportunity in your interviews to speak about your volunteering experiences and places where you've had a public facing role where you have had to have a duty of care. I think those are quite unique experiences to mention in an interview and really show that you are someone that is willing to give selfless service to the people around you. So care is a really, really big part of the NHS values. And then compassion. Compassion is a general buzzword in medicine, but all it really means is it's quite similar to care, but it's about how you provide that care. Um, are you empathetic? Are you someone that can build rapport e easily? That's what really compassion is about. It's about how care is given through relationships based on empathy, respect and dignity. And we'll come back to that respect and dignity because it's a really big part of the NHS. But once again, if you were to speak about compassion, I think talking about work experience is also a good opportunity. So what did you see the doctor do when they had that consultation? How did they build rapport? What type of nonverbal communication skills were they using? All those type of things are really key in showing how compassion is something that you yourself have seen and you align with as well. Um, so maybe speaking about your voluntary experiences once again, or even just general life experiences, how have you been able to build relationships with people? And then the third one, competence. So as you, as I'm sure you're aware, being a medical professional, you have to be on top of, of the academics. You have to know what you're talking about. Otherwise, no one will believe you and your patients won't believe you. You have to be really really on your stuff and competence is really just about um, having the ability to understand someone's health and social needs so being able to formulate a diagnosis having that clinical and technical knowledge that means that you can be an advocate for your patient in their treatment so in terms of you guys being able to show competence obviously you can't show that you can make a diagnosis yet it would be through your epqs that you've done any achievements or prizes or extra things that you've done that have shown that you have gone above the level so if you have any individual awards for your academic achievements, really being able to speak about that and articulate that in an interview setting is going to really make you stand out and show that you are the competent person to enter that medical school. And then communication. I think we all know the importance of communication is something that's said all the time and it's central to your role in healthcare. And just generally, you need to be able to communicate effectively you also need to listen as well. You need to listen effectively because, you know, you obviously want to speak to your patient, but being very mindful of how that patient is from looking at their body language to listening what they're really concerned about 
a big part of medicine is you want to speak to a patient, but you want to know what their ideas of what they may be going through. What are their concerns? And maybe what are their expectations from speaking to you? You want to be able to really understand why that patient has come to you. And then from there, you'll be able to communicate effectively with them. And to show you're a good communicator, I think we all know this, you, you have to essentially show that you have been in a, in a situation where you can communicate with someone, where you have spoken to someone or you've been in a team and you've been able to communicate with that team. Um, but yeah, generally showing examples of where you've seen good communication or even when you've seen bad communication, speaking about an experience that you saw in work experience where a doctor and a patient didn't have the best relationship, being able to reflect on that is also going to be quite important in understanding that the role you have ahead of you. And then courage. Courage is a, is a really interesting one because I think courage means different things to different people. But the NHS really defines it as being able to do the right thing for people we care for. To speak up when we have concerns, it means having the personal strength and vision to innovate and embrace new ways of working. So I think that's almost two things in itself. You, you need to be courageous, you need to be brave, but you also need to be quite open-minded. And that's a big part of healthcare. You need to, you're going to be working on a team with a diverse range of people. And having an open mind is important in healthcare. Um, you know, you may not always have the, the, you may not always believe what someone else is saying, but being able to be receptive of their opinion is key. So I think showing where you have been courageous is possibly showing that you are examples of where you've had to be resilient, where you've had to persevere through certain things, or where you've even had to be vulnerable and reach out to people for help. That's a really good example of being courageous. And even if you're an advocate for something, if you, if you believe in something strongly that you've volunteered or you've done charity work for, that's also showing that you're courageous and it's something that will make you once again stand out in an interview setting. And then finally, commitment. So commitment, it's a commitment to our patients, to the role, to our populations. We need to build on a commitment to improve the care and experience of our patients. So in anything, you need to be committed. You need to be consistent and committed to the cause. So if you guys have had any extracurricular activities that you've been doing for a long time, that's just a brilliant way of showing that you've been committed to something. If you can keep at something, even when it gets tough, that shows that you are committed. And yeah, really draw on those experiences that you've had where maybe you've held a role for about one to two years. There may have been a rough patch that you had to endure, but you still went ahead because you believed in the long-term vision. That's what, you know, these interviewers are really looking to see from you that if you were to go to medical school, and maybe you had a bad patch that you'd still be willing to persevere by, you know, obviously with the necessary means, but you'd still be willing to go ahead and be committed to the cause. And yeah, so that, that recaps the, um, the six C's. I think obviously that's a lot to take in, but essentially having a really good idea of what they are and referring to back to this slide or to the NHS documents is going to be really helpful in understanding you know, the value-based recruitment principles. And I think, you know, they're really important to, to familiarize yourself with because when people speak about the NHS, yes, they want you to know about the history. They're not going to really ask you about Anurind Bevan radical idea. They're really going to ask you about the six C's and, you know, how do you align with compassion? What examples have you seen of compassion? And that actually leads on nicely to our next activity, which will be based around the NHS constitution. So the NHS constitution and the six C's are quite similar. But the NHS constitution is more about the values that the NHS wants to have for, for, for people to have. And that's really working together for patients, respect and dignity, commitment to quality of care, compassion, improving lives, and everyone counts. So you could say they're quite similar, but there are a bit of differences in some of them. And I'd, and I'd be really interested to see what you guys come up with in your definitions of what these mean. Um, so I've put two questions here. We can have a quickly, just a brief discussion on why is respect and dignity an important value in the NHS con constitution? And what do you think they mean by everyone counts? Um, I think we'll go, we'll start opposite now. So I think we'll go with breakout room five and then we'll go back to one. So does anyone from that group just want to speak about what they think maybe if we go for the first question, why is respect and dignity an important value in the NHS constitution from room five? Yeah, hi, so I'll be the spokesperson. So with respect and dignity, we thought it's all about like not judging people. So it's having an acknowledgement of everyone who's under the NHS. 
So it's like regardless of their culture and background. So we kind of think it's like having like a knowledge of like different needs. So for example, like with Jehovah's Witnesses, we know that they can't accept blood transfusions. So we think it's about, you know, people in the NHS having knowledge of that. And, you know, when they receive information that, oh, you know, it's like said patient doesn't want a DNR or something, it's like mm. uh, respecting their wishes. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's also a really, you know, apt example in that, you know, respecting people's beliefs is a big part of being in the NHS and also people's cultures too. Yeah, I think we'll go to um, breakout room four. What do you guys, what did you guys take on, you know, respect and dignity, particularly dignity, um, if you wanted to touch on that? Um, so we thought that um, respect and dignity, um, we need that in the NHS to provide a stable relationship between doctor and patient so that the patient can tell the doctor anything um, they feel comfortable and so that the doctors can do their jobs effectively. Uh, we also thought that um, it was really linked with the idea of professionalism. So um, you are for the patient and you want the patient to come again and once again feel comfortable um, communicating with you. Yeah, I think professionalism is a big part of that actual statement, making sure that you know, you, you, you set boundaries, but you're also representing the NHS in a positive light. And I think, you know, professionalism is a big part of the things that you probably you guys will probably learn about when you do your situational judgment questions in the UCAT. There's a big part of professionalism in there. Um, I think we'll go to breakout room three and you guys can speak about the question is, what do you think they mean by everyone counts? So anyone from room three? Yeah, um, so, we had a couple of different points for everyone counts um the first point was mainly about sort of like people with special needs um so understanding that you know there are some who can communicate and some that can't communicate but each should be you know treated like fairly um and like with understanding um we also touched on um taking every case seriously of course there are some cases which are difficult to sort of pinpoint um but sort of like giving every case a chance to receive um the resources given out um fairly and equally and not just sort of one group um and you know having that chance to go further um if there is you know a chance to go further um so yeah <laughs> I think those are those are really good points. I like the one of you know making sure that you're you're looking after everyone in a sense, regardless of their condition. You are making sure that they are looked after sufficiently. Um, I think we'll go to breakout room two as well. Um, you guys can answer any question you prefer. Uh, what do you guys think about respect and dignity, and also what do you think by everyone counts? So you can choose. Okay, um, I'll go with everyone counts. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about not belittling people's concerns um, because obviously there have been cases in the past where it might be seen as, oh no, it's, it's absolutely fine when actually it's not. And I think it's about learning from these points and realising that just because someone might seem as though they're sort of overdoing it, like you have to respect the fact that they are concerned and investigate it further and provide them with the quality care that the NHS is supposed to like provide to them. Yeah, definitely, I think you know ensuring that every concern is looked after is a big part of you know working in the NHS and you know concerns is something that I think all doctors need to be interested in. I think they are, and I think we'll finally go to breakout room one and once again you guys have the choice. Of picking between each question? Um, I think I'm going to give an answer to both of them since they're somehow relative. Mm. And I mean, this, the answers are related to each other. And I think that we should, I mean, the professionals must respect people's personal preferences, as they've mm. already mentioned, and to remain objective the whole time. I think that they will just many people with different backgrounds and different cultures 
and uh, it's very important to like remain objective the whole time because it's about people's lives you cannot include your personal like prefer preferences there and um, to provide a holistic care and um, that's it and then people feel comfortable like and not they, they should not feel like a burden mm. to the staff so like every time they feel bad or sick or just a little bit ill they have the like they're ensured that they will receive a good health care and stuff like that they're confident about it yeah and those are really good and i really liked how you spoke about holistic care and showing that you know we are considering all factors that's a really big part um, but yeah, I think I'm generally I'm very quite impressed with what you guys have come up with. Um, really high quality answers, and I'm sure that if you were ever to ask the question about the constitution, you'd definitely be able to to answer that and smash it. So yeah, really good work, guys.